Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors with James Holst. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish? And the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. <laughs> With Cal Schweel. What a specimen. And Joel Nilsson. This is an absolute monster. <laughs> This is In-Depth Outdoors. On today's episode of In-Depth Outdoors, we're gonna shoot a show that looks unlike any other that we've ever done before. Uh, instead of being out in the portables chasing around on the, on the ice, we're gonna be fishing out of a hard side ice house. Behind me, this is a glacier ice house, and that's where we're gonna spend our time fishing today. And we're gonna do that for two reasons. One, uh, there's a huge number of ice fishermen that love to fish out of hard side houses. And we've never done a show that covers how to do that before, so we're missing a huge chunk of our audience. So we're gonna make up for that today. And two, Ben Brannigan, he's the guy behind the camera that does such a great job making our show look the way it does. Uh, he deserves to get in front of the camera and catch some fish. And it sounds like he's on the verge of pneumonia. So the guy needs to get out of the field and get inside a nice warm house and kind of take a week off and catch a bunch of fish. So uh, stick around. We're on Lake Winnipeg today. The conditions are absolutely miserable out here today. That's one of the reasons that we picked this week to do the hard side house. It's about 30, 35 below zero right now, as you see. The winds are fierce, the snow's blowing around, so it's time for me to get in the house, get sitting next to Ben and see if we can't put some fish on the ice. So do stick around, I think you're gonna enjoy today's show. Fish. Got him. Yeah. He's <laughs> Not a giant, but a better fish. Tell Those you what, man. Scamp. The sun makes all the difference. Oh yeah. You can see him bobbing down there. I want to see a big old green snoot come up through there. I saw them sitting at the bottom of the hole, so you well, can't they're just not, it's not very deep here. You just don't have a lot of time to fight them. So when you no. get them to the bottom of the ice, they are green. Well, that's not a bad fish. Not... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go, dude. Nice. Oh. Thank you. There you go. That's why we come yeah. on up here. There you go. That's what it's all about. Winnipeg Greenback. Man. We had uh, two choices today. Freeze our keisters off. It's like 35 below zero with the wind chill. And of course, I've been wanting to get this man out from behind the camera. He's uh, Ben Brennigan, number one in the field camera guy. If you're not familiar with him by name, you've certainly seen his work. He's responsible for uh, making our show look a lot better than it deserves to look. So I've been wanting to get Ben on some fish. And of course, when I asked him what he wanted to do, where he wanted to fish, he said, uh, in a hard house, uh, in my slippers. And he is actually in his <laughs> slippers today. So uh, you've deserved a shot to get out here in a hard house and catch some fish. And I do appreciate the assist on that one. That's a nice fish, man. That's a really nice fish. Gosh, those colors are just so cool. You don't, I mean, you don't see anything like it. There is nothing like it in the, uh, the fish world that I know of where a walleye looks those colors just here. All right, that's probably a uh, mid 20 inch fish. Yeah. And of course, when you hear about Winnipeg, this lake is all about the giant. Uh, you know, 30 inch fish up here away, 12 pounds or so. Uh, very few places in the world you can go to catch the numbers of huge fish that you can here on Lake Winnipeg. 30-inch uh, fish up here will often exceed 12 pounds, and uh, it's very common for guys to catch 31, 32s. I've actually heard of 34, 35-inch fish up here. Uh, the last time we were up here, a buddy of mine caught a fish just short of 15 pounds, so it's, it's an absolute unreal trophy destination. Like I said, it's one of the only places where I was behind the camera and I could officially say I was super jealous, so that's why I said we've got to come back up here and do it again. It's Ben's dream trip. <laughs> You've earned it, pal. Oh, hey, how's 
Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this one's going to be way bigger than yours, James. Oh, yeah? Yeah. In what, six years? <laughs> Ten. Craftsmanship and precision are just words until you add driving passion and a knowledge of what defines rod building excellence. Tuned up custom rods are built with a perfect blend of rod balance and action. A truly custom experience achieved only with the highest quality materials. From the handle to the last guide and every thread wrap in between. It's these components, along with an attention to detail, that makes our customized rods a tuned up custom. I need a minnow. You know, this is just so different from the way we normally fish. Um, we're limited in mobility now, but of course we've got luxury. Uh, we will not move this house today. It's just, it just takes too much time. It's the complete opposite of the portables we uh, normally run around in. Um, the portables allow that flexibility of movement. Uh, flip the top back, off you go. Uh, the house here, complete comfort. I just ate a uh, sandwich out of the microwave and then caught a 25 inch walleye. Uh, but we will not be moving this house until it's time to go home. So uh, complete different game plan from what we normally in, in employ, what we normally use when we catch yeah. these fish. And I can see why you opted for this versus yes. uh, being out there on the ice chasing around, freezing your face like you did on Upper Red. Yeah, I'll take this any day of the week. Ben's fishing a number five jig and wrap. I've got a uh, quarter ounce pink glow UV rattle spoon. Um, up here in Manitoba, everything's barbless. So we got all the barbs pinched down. And then I did upsize the treble hook on my spoon. Uh, back in Minnesota, the hooks that come on that uh, UV rattle spoon, they're perfectly sized for our fish. Up here, I always feel a little better by upsizing that treble hook about one size. So that's what I've done. And then uh, just adding a whole minnow instead of uh, you know using the minnow head like we do back in Minnesota, just throw the whole minnow on there and give it a much bigger profile because these fish, they're so big and very often they're so aggressive. They come through, they take one look at your bait, they make a decision to hit it and they just jet. Yeah, especially these smaller fish though, you can tell when they come up on the graph, they just come up, look at it, but those big fish that we have had come in, no second guesses about it, they came in and whacked it. Here we go. Get him. Punish him. It's not what I had in oh mind. Oh my god. Whoa! Did you see that? Do it again! <laughs> oh. You're he's, out, Mr. Brennigan. No, he's like hitting <laughs> he's like hitting a foot of slack into the line. Are you watching this? I am, and I'm starting to think that you need to get on the other side of the camera now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I have any hooks on this thing or what. One more time, an even half dozen. It's like five feet under the ice. Oh! <laughs> Frickin' the six times the charm. Little saga? No, no, a little walleye. A little walleye, yeah. Six times. He's good to me. Yeah, you have to give that fish uh, some respect for being completely unwilling to give up and for giving you six chances. Six chances, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should give up, but. <laughs> He'd come up so hard at it, he'd hit six inches of slack in the line. It was... It threw you off. He was hitting it so hard, yeah, it made it hard. Yeah, he'd push it up and... I got a noodle in there. You can get that up yeah. bite <laughs> for those walleyes. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to let him go. <sighs> There's dinner. Now, if I can get that 13-pounder to give me six chances... They never do. Well, who knows? <laughs> look at that, look at that, look at that. Yep. Come on, come on, fish. Oh. You want everything about that. It's a beautiful, beautiful spoon with a delicious looking minnow. Uh, Got him. There you go. Eat it, you dog. There we go. And get you. that out of the way. Here he comes. I had him on the bottom of the ice. Oh, there you go. Ain't all that big. Yeah. There you go. Come here, buddy. Not a bad fish. No, not at all. Greenback. Probably about uh, 20 inches. Yeah. He sat there and stared at that spoon far too long. I didn't figure he was gonna eat. Can I have your hemostats, please? Sure can. See, I'm completely out of sorts. I'm not wearing my uh, my Strike Master bibs, so I don't have my hemostats. Out of your element, I'm almost. My, I'm, I'm okay, though. You're just, it looks like you're doing just fine. Hey, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be anywhere outside the day, so 
I do love the run and gun style approach to fishing, but we wouldn't be fishing today if it wasn't for this hard side house. So we'll take what we can uh, uh, get out of today and, and like it. This will work just fine. Absolutely. Nice fish. All right, back you go. Bye bye. There you go. All right. I need a minnow. Yeah. That spoon's doing it, man. It's doing the trick. What do you have, that uh, pink UV tiger? Uh, pink UV tiger. Mm -hmm. Throwing a minnow on there and then uh, doing this jobby here. <laughs> Glowing it up on the ceiling, so. I don't know if it's making a difference, but I've got uh, two decent fish to start the day. Can't complain with that. Nope. New for 2015, the release of the WX1910 from Skeeter Boats redefines the features and performance anglers can expect from a 19-foot boat, including the torque transfer system, making the hull on the WX1910 the strongest ever built, the React keel, enabling unparalleled boat control in tough conditions, and integrated jump seats for the ultimate in seating flexibility. Visit your local Skeeter Boats dealer and see for yourself why no other 19-foot boat offers more advanced features, storage, and performance than the WX1910. Fish. He absolutely just inhaled it. Oh, and it still come out. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect hook release. Yeah. No, he just absolutely. I got one too. Double, 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 double. Nice. <laughs> it's the buddy system. Get some cousins there. Not exactly what Winnipeg is known for, but when you can get them two at a time, that's just fine. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, they were just. I mean, I, they were hot. Crazy, Holy crazy cat. fish. He'd come up, hit you, turn around, hit me, but. Well, you know, we should probably keep a few of these fish just in case we get stranded out here for an extra day, but <laughs> like usual, I packed more than enough groceries to get us through, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back you go. Yeah. <sighs> That's the second fish I've caught today where drop the spoon down. Of course, I pulled your transducer. Yeah. Drop the spoon down, lift it up, and the fish was there. Never had to do anything to work that fish at all. Yeah, it was, it's like, it reminds me of those eerie fish. Yeah. <laughs> The conditions remind me of Erie too. Yeah, but it's similar. It is so brutal out there right now. Atta boy. There he goes. Ate that one good. I think this is going to be about the same as the other ones, yep. Got a little eater? Yeah, like I said, if you're eating fish, you have a heyday. And, oh, I think I can just pop. Yep, those, that, those barbless regulations don't seem to lose a ton of fish. Not using barbs at all, and nope. it's just... It actually makes unhooking it about the only breeze. difference that I see from using the barbless hooks is just keeping a minnow on. Yeah. And, you know, and there's ways to work around that too. You just hook the minnow head deeper. You know, you go back kind of like where the gills meet versus up towards the mouth on the minnow. And Come on. Oh, yeah. That's a little bit better, Mark. Yeah, she's actually, she's kicking a little bit. Let's see if I can get it through that hole. He's right at the bottom of that hole. Come on. There we go. He's coming up. There's no turning back for him. Some ice fish. Whoa, oh, chicken wraps out. <laughs> there you go. Not a bad fish. Not a bad at all. That chicken wrap popped out and it's yeah. stuck in my arm. <laughs> Saw that. <laughs> Thanks for that resetting yeah. the hook. It's a nice Winnipeg fish right there. Good green back. All right, man. Yeah. That's okay. a nice midday fish. We were kind of talking about how uh, the bite had slowed down a little bit because it's, you know, noon basically. Yeah, high skies, not the best time to be catching fish, but yep. he'll do the trick. Let him go. Bye bye. <laughs> Nicely done. There he goes. Got him on this number five clown jigging wrap and I made a few little modifications to this to kind of suit our needs up here. The hook that they put on these is, you know, it's great size for average walleyes, the ones that we're used to catching. With these Winnipeg greenbacks, you want to beef up the hook just like you did. You mm -hmm. also put a bigger hook on yep. your spoon. And you've got so much ice up here and it's so cold that you drill a hole, a yeah, 10 inch hole, and six hours later, it's going to be mm -hmm. that hole's going to start shrinking down eight inches. So I was having problems with this jigging wrap getting snagged on the bottom of the ice so when you pull this thing up that front hook gets caught so what i did there is i just bent it back a little bit so it can't get snagged on the front of the ice it's definitely helped out the truth is you almost never catch a fish on the front hook no not at all you've got this nice big treble down here especially and yep. uh, it just caused me problems so it's kind of what i got cooking if we had six inches of ice or a foot of ice it's not as big of an issue but no. when you've got four feet of ice trying to snake that fish up through that hole, because like we said, you almost never catch the fish on the front hook, so the front hook is just sitting out like this, mm -hmm. just waiting to catch the edge. Yeah. 
And uh, fish got me, man. I'm bleeding. I took one for the team. Well, I appreciate that. <clears throat> How about a pizza? I can go for a pizza right now. It's about that time of day. I'll make you a pizza. It's awful nice of you. Keep an eye on that. Sure will. Well, I hope you like sausage pepperoni, buddy. Works for me. I figure if uh, you'll almost get pneumonia for me, the least I can do is make you dinner. Thank you very much. Push and hold for pilot light. Yeah, that's how it works. We have ignition. Nice. I feel like your pizza done, medium rare? More of a medium well for a pizza. Perfect. All right, cross fingers. Introducing the new wireless PanCam camera system from Markham Technologies. The groundbreaking interface that allows an angler to wirelessly monitor and control the left-right pan of a remote camera from up to 300 feet away. The Markham PanCam system transmits a live video stream via Wi-Fi back to your Apple or Android device, and the free Markham app is even capable of connecting to multiple cameras at the same time for multi-camera on-ice coverage. This winter, take full control of your underwater camera with Markham Technologies' wireless PanCam camera system. Oh yeah. Cheesy perfection, Brennigan. Oh, that looks delicious. This is me making up for all that stuff I make you do outside in the snow. Only worth a pizza, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna tell you to not eat this too soon because you'll burn your mouth, but I know you're gonna do it anyway, so. Excellent. Hot and greasy. Looks perfect. This year makes sitting still and waiting for fish to come to, to us a little bit more uh, tolerable. No kidding. You know, you could cook something on a body heater or you could just put it in the oven. Um, no offense to Cal's pizza rolls, but this is going to be better. Oh yeah, much better. <laughs> oh, I just had one come up and flare on mine. Mm. Look like a big fish. Oh, here he is. That's a big mark too. You got him over there? Yeah. There ah, he is. Ah, you lucky dog. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah. There's some weight. What I saw on my side looked pretty decent. Oh, that was by far the biggest mark I've seen today. Oh, it's so cold out that middle of the day, we brought the auger in here to repunch holes because the holes, you can just watch them freezing from the sides. They're staying open at the top, but what was a 10 inch hole is probably now about a six or so. Oh, it's a big fish. Oh, I got him. I got him. <laughs> it's a big fish, bud. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Oh, ben Brennigan's day off fish. Right there. Man, that. Biggest fish you ever stud. caught sitting on a leather couch? Biggest fish I've ever caught on a leather couch <laughs> by far. Wow. Nicely done. That's what we come up to Winnipeg for. And that fish, there's a pretty good chance that fish flashed at my bait and then came right over and hit your digging rep. Well, thank you for taking me up here and thank you for giving me <laughs> that fish. That's awesome. Very nicely done. Fat mama, beautiful green back. Yeah, that's these colors, just classic Winnipeg. What a nice fish. And, oh yeah. I see where did I, oh, here's that hemo if you need it. Yeah, he's right in the corner of the mouth. That was perfect. That's one of the things I love about those big fish. I mean, you'll lose a little fish once in a while on a bait because they just kind of nip at it. When a big mama comes in and hits that bait, she usually just, just bolts it. twerked it, wow. Nicely done. We're gonna get him back down there. Well, I knew we weren't gonna just kill the fish up here, given the conditions. I mean, it's a horrible cold front, but I'm feeling a lot better about this whole thing now that you got your big fish oh, above yeah. ice. <laughs> That's great. Congrats. Awesome, thank you. We're gonna get her back. What a fish. Boom, off like a rocket. <laughs> Watch out there. Yeah, now you gotta clean up the floor. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> back to my normal duties. This is too, yeah, right. <laughs> Awesome. Well yeah. done, man. Now, hopefully, there'll be a couple more just like that yet. Yeah, that was great. What a difference, huh, between the boink of a little fish and then just watching your rod tip just Yeah. Before we get too much farther, we should probably talk about where we're fishing today. Ben and I are on Lake Winnipeg, obviously, and we launched out of Chalet Beach. And if you don't see that on the map, it's just a real small uh, access 
Uh, there's no access fee charge, and it's just south of Winnipeg Beach. And what we're doing here is uh, we're obviously towing around a hard side house. That doesn't give us a lot of latitude for running around on the lake. Uh, the only reason this was possible is because Winnipeg hasn't received a lot of snow this year. Uh, typically at this time of year, you're looking at three foot of snow on the lake, and the only people that are getting around are doing so on tracks. Uh, but Ben wanted to get out, catch some big walleyes, and do it in comfort. So even though we're seeing 30, 35 mile an hour winds today uh, and some horrible uh, temperatures, we knew we'd be able to get out here and at least get on some fish. So we, we only came out to uh, uh, an area where we could get to 12 foot of water. So you didn't have to come that far off the shore. And there was two little breakers that we had to cross. That first breaker was kind of at about, at about that six foot mark. And the next one was at the 12 foot mark. And uh, we didn't feel like we needed to go any further than that and push our luck. So it really, you know, we're probably what, two miles offshore? Yeah, if that. You won't very often be able to get out here in a hard side house like this. Uh, conditions the way they are, very little snow that allowed us to do that. But typically you're looking at, uh, you know, the portable routine or a snow bear or something like that. Uh, but the opportunity was perfect. We knew what you wanted to do. This was the place <laughs> to accomplish it. It sure was, and that was made it worth it right Money. there. That was awesome. And all you got to do is kick your cold for next week, and you'll be back in business. Exactly. I think catching that fish is easier than kicking this cold, though. All right, man. Sun's getting low on the horizon now, and I know both Ben and I, while we'd love to stay out here, we've got a lot of respect for this big lake, too. So uh, we very much want to have this house on the shore <laughs> by the time the sun goes down. So uh, I've had a great time today. It was a wonderful solution to the almost unwinnable problem of 40 below zero. So I know between the two of us, we definitely needed uh, that uh, recuperation day. And this house, this glacier, uh, definitely did that for us. So uh, I don't know what you think, but uh, I'm really looking forward to adding this type of house to our arsenal for next season. Without a doubt. And this is the place to do it right here. And the nice thing is, uh, we're in February now, end of February, so we have the best month of fishing up here on Winnipeg yet to come. So if you want to come up here, you still got plenty of time. I've never been up here in February before. Uh, of course, the conditions lived up to the, uh, um, you know, the reputation. This yeah. is a very, very, very cold part of the world, but obviously there's still a lot of fish that can be caught. Uh, this year, again, we've mentioned this already, that the exception this year is just the lack of snow cover. So getting around is so easy, and that really bodes well for that March time period when the masses start to show up here on Lake Winnipeg, and for good reason. It's just loaded with huge, huge fish. Uh, like I said, the last time I was up here, not counting today, uh, the biggest fish for our group on that trip was just short of 15 pounds. Uh, so this lake has the capability of kicking out some giants, and that's what brings people from all over the country. Exactly. Well, I hope you enjoyed your, uh, your dream trip, your day off, so to speak. <laughs> uh, next week, of course, you'll be back behind the camera. And like I mentioned, um, you know, we're really looking to add a hard side house like this for next winter. Uh, and uh, that, that said, I really want to say a special thanks to Corey Pink. He's the owner of this ice house, this glacier ice house. He was incredibly gracious enough uh, to allow us to take it out here on Winnipeg, a lake where, you know, he might not get it back. Yeah, that was, that was a bold call on his part. But. It was. Well, okay, thank you, Corey. So uh, from Ben and I to everybody there at home, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.